All right, good morning, everybody. God bless each one of you. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about dirt baits. Uh, years ago, when I when I was a little boy, I know a lot of people did this um, when I was growing up, but my my dad used to take us out, and uh, we used to fish a lot with a uh, propeller, a little jerk bait, and uh, a little balsa bait, and uh, he always had that little worm, that little purple worm with the pink fire tail. Those are the two combinations. Pretty much because that's all you had. Um, you, re you really didn't have a whole lot other than that, so you learned to use what you had. So I got pretty decent using that style of jerk bait, um, which it has a completely different action than a lot of the baits we have nowadays. Uh, it was light enough that you about had to either throw it on a Zepco 33 or you had to throw it on a spinning rod. And both of them had to be about 10 pound line. Later on in the years, uh, you had a lot of people that started coming out with, of course you had the Smithwick Rogue, but to be honest with you, the, the Smithwick Rogue's a totally different bait. And uh, I never did get much used to it because uh, growing up, we didn't have a whole lot. I mean, we. We pretty much were very blessed with what we did have. And uh, so the experience that I got fishing the dirt bait was you threw it out, you twitched, um, you twitched the bait and it would go down and make a little, little side, little quiver, and then it would pop back up. And a lot of times when you would retwitch it again from the surface, then they would come up and, the, and they would hit it. And I noticed as I was um, a kid that a lot of times um, my dad, what he had a tendency of doing is he would throw it out, twitch it, and if they didn't hit it within the first two or three little twitches, then he would just reel it in steadily and he would catch fish reeling it in. But I tend to notice as I got older uh, in the years that, man, they hit it a lot when you first twitched it. That was, that was the whole action of that bait. Uh, that first little two or three twitches after it hit the surface, you'd kind of leave it like you used to the old popper, leave it till the ripples died out, and you twitched it a time or two, and then you let it pop back up, that that was a lot of the reasons why you got the action. Um, I don't know if it kind of had like a look, like it was a dying little minnow or what it was, but you had both actions. You had a... Not only did you have the little little quiver of a little fish, but at the same time you had a topwater bait. So you had two in one. And, and over the years, I've noticed, and I've used a lot of other jerk baits. I've used Lucky Crafts. I've used, um, I haven't had as much experience with Mega Bass, which they, they look awesome from what I can tell. They're just a little too pricey for me right now. But um, one of them, one of the baits that I used a lot was a Pointer 100. You could throw it on a bait caster, so of course, you know, you, you kind of got the feeling that it was easier to work on that bait caster. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I did catch a lot of fish on it, but it wasn't like I used to. It wasn't like I used to on that Rapella on that spinning rod. But the only problem with the Rapella is it didn't have that side-to-side -side action. Yes, it had a little quick quiver when you pulled it, but when you repeatedly did it, it didn't really have that side-to-side -side spook-like action. And I did notice that at times that was very important for the bait to have. And of course, you're usually trying to be efficient. You're trying to get a bait, you know, that um, not necessarily the perfect bait, but you're trying to get one that, you know, that you can buy two or three of and you have just in case you lose one, but that you don't have to carry this big suitcase for a tackle box. You know, when you go fishing with other people or just in your own, you don't want to pack around a big suitcase everywhere you go. Um, so one of the things that I realized, and I started watching little videos on YouTube, and I started realizing this is in the last, probably in the last six, seven years, I realized that a lot of guys um, were looking at big famous fishermen that he's the one that fished the dirt baits the best. So I started watching little videos that he would put out all the time. And I noticed that all these 
people talk about when it comes to jerk baits, everybody wants a suspending jerk bait. Everybody wants a jerk bait that right out of the box suspends. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, suspending jerk bait's great in certain times of year. But there's times of year that how come we don't have one that ha that comes back up and yet it's still weighted. So I started going through my mind and going through my mind and one day I thought, you know what, I'm going to switch out these hooks because I got hooked on to that Strike King jerk bait. And some people like it, some don't. They're all most of the time they're about 10 bucks. So I started looking at that Strike King jerk bait and I realized that it was heavy enough and it had one of the best side-to-side -side actions I'd ever seen in a jerk bait. The only difference was is it was suspended. Well, by accident one day, I was sitting there changing around the hooks and I thought, you know what, I, these hooks keep bending out that come with it. I'm gonna switch out and put some good hooks. I've got some hooks laying over here, some number sixes. Well, I put those number sixes on there, but they were uh, EWGs from Gamagatsu. And I'm gonna tell you what, I noticed that that bait was rising quicker. And I thought, man, I never even thought about that because at first I had bought some number fours to replace it, but they were heavier and they were sinking the bait. And I was like, well, I definitely don't want it to sink because I'm trying to fish in shallow water. I'm trying to get a jerk bait and a top water out of the same bait. Like I used to fish as a kid. And uh, I put those number sixes on there and I fished it several times and I was just amazed at the difference at how fish would hit it. Fish would, they would come five to 10 feet in this local little, little lake that we have to hit this bait because it had such an action, not only right to left, but it had that floating to the top action that that old Rapella had too. And I'm gonna tell you what, they absolutely killed it. There was one day that I bet I caught over 25 fish on in one little spot. And the only thing I was doing was twitch, twitch, and letting it rise to the top. And then right when it would hit the top, I would pull it down and twitch, twitch, and boy, they would just come out of nowhere and nail it. But then at the same time, I went to a little deeper spot, and I threw it, and I twitch, 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 never let it came to the top. And they would hit it there, too. So both actions are very important. And I learned that you can change a lot of people what they want. That's what you hear about. We get trapped, I believe, in this thought that, oh, well, if uh, everybody wants it suspended, I just need to get it suspended. Well, the suspending's okay. But you need to have, you need to experiment a little bit because at different times of the year, they're looking for different things. I've gone up in the shallows and it being the winter time, I'm talking about almost ice on the water and I've thrown a jerk bait and I've thrown a little a trick worm and they have nailed it because they thought it was a dying minnow. Don't disregard looking to make a getting a jerk bait that floats. It's just as important as one that dives. I've got several that I've changed the hooks. Now the hooks I've started to settle on is a number three. Um, little round band got my gutso because I got them on another crank bait and I like I said, I had extra hooks sitting around. And I said, you know what? I wonder what this bait will do with these hooks. So it has a little bit quicker rise, but it's still slow enough that I could use it as a dirt bait, a jerk bait at a, at a reasonable pace. But I don't mean to make this video real long, but um, it's just something about a jerk bait that you don't hear about. I don't hear anybody talking about in any videos. I don't hear anybody talk about, and it's super important because it really catches fish. And that's what we're out there to do, right? I mean, there are some guys, like I said, that they spend all this money on these jerk baits that suspend perfectly or spend all this time. And I'm like, well, that, that's good. But many times I want it to float back up because that's my top water at the same time as my jerk bait. I mean, most of the time I'm going in a kayak and I've got three rods. I don't want to have a big suitcase with me. I just want to have a couple different baits that do a couple different things so that I can reuse them. There's times, guys, that I use a little small little little crankbait, and I use that crankbait as a jerk bait. You know, yes, it pops up faster, but I use it just if you pop it just right, it almost makes the same little sound as a popper, and you'd be surprised how fish come out and just kill it because they think it's a little bluegill swimming down real quick. Um, 
anyway i've got a little video um you're gonna see first i, I describe it a little bit but you're gonna see the same jerk bait just two different colors different hooks and a I guess the most of these are the same jerk bait, just two different colors. Um, the biggest difference between the two of them, uh, these are Strike King jerk baits, but and they're made to be suspending jerk baits. Very wide side to side action, but you can actually change the action by doing something very very simple. So this one here still has the original hooks they're number four round bins that's what comes with them and uh this one up here has a uh, number three gamagatsu's round bins that little difference in the change of uh size changes the weight and you can see in that little video that the top one raises up a little bit faster and because it doesn't have the extra weight, even though it's very small of this one here, of the bigger hooks, this actually has a quicker snap to it. No, it doesn't go as deep, but I'm not really trying to get it to go deep, especially this time of year and early in the uh, springtime, in the fall and in the spring, because I don't really want it to go deep. I, I want it to kind of stay shallow because a lot of those fish are moving up shallow to get, uh, bites right now that's that's where they're at they're chasing shad and they're doing different things and most of the time they're up shallow so i'm not really worried about it um you notice this one here that it floated up to the top well floating up to the top um, as quick as it did is actually a good thing an idea god bless y'all have a wonderful day hope the lord blesses y'all with it with wonderful time out on the lake or rivers or creeks or ponds or wherever you're at just remember that god made it all and he made it all for us to enjoy and just look up every now and then when you do catch one of those fish you know what thank you good lord for making this so that i can enjoy y'all have a blessed day see you later